So uh, I thought I'd make a quick little screen recording showing how the way I use OmniFocus has changed in the last uh, uh, since I made the last video. Um, and basically, the changes are uh, the addition of a couple of perspectives, and I've changed the settings on some perspectives. Um, and I also use OmniFocus for my waiting for list now. Uh, with the perspectives from last time, I have a today list, which is basically all my flagged items, and a next items perspective which is the next thing to do for every every project. Um, I've also changed the project settings so that uh, it only shows any projects that aren't pending and aren't on hold, basically, or all the active projects that I can actually work on. Um, and this keeps it nice and clean when I'm uh, doing planning for the stuff I kind of need to do now. Um, and it kind of gets all the rest of the stuff out of the way. It's like a, It's like an automatic focus almost. Um, and then I've got another perspective which shows all of my projects um, that uh, are remaining. So this one shows all of the uh, all of the projects that are pending or on hold, uh, and it's only completed or dropped projects that disappear from this list. Uh, the context list also only shows actions from um, these current projects. Um, now, in order that I can have a, an easier look at the pending projects and on hold ones, I've got these two perspectives. This one shows all the on hold projects. And this one shows any of my pending projects. Now, I didn't used to use the pending feature a lot, um, but I've started to sort of play around with dates a lot more in OmniFocus now. Um, and I tend to, you know, I'm setting start dates for stuff now because most of my projects uh, are scoped to not begin until a certain time. And I put them in here. Uh, and even, even if I could be working on some of the bits of them, if I know that I've got something of a much, much higher priority, I'll often put a start date for a project that's... Um, maybe two weeks away when I know that one project's delivered. And that way it saves me um, it saves me having too much stuff in my context view here. I mean, at the moment I've got hardly anything um, because one particular project is going to be ruling my life for the next couple of weeks. Um, so the other thing I've started doing is, uh, is using a waiting for list. Um, and basically, uh, the way I do it is if I send a message off to somebody... Um, I'll send the email off. Um, and then when it's sent, I'll use the uh, Clippertron to uh, send it to my inbox. And then I'll uh, put in a note to chase somebody. So, uh, chase Joe about a hello message. Um, and then I'll tag it with uh, a hashtag borrowed from Twitter, um, hash WF, which stands for waiting for. And then I'll put the date that I sent it. Um, so I'll save that. And then when I come around to my inbox, um, I can give it a project. So it's uh, probably a personal miscellaneous item. Um, and that'll be another email that I'll be uh, emailing about. Um, and I know I want to chase him because I want him to say hello back to me in maybe uh, maybe two weeks. And this message then can disappear into the system. Um, so if I clean up quickly, that'll disappear. And what it allows me to do is, um, when that comes around, I'll get... Uh, I'll get this pop-up automatically, a message telling me to chase Joe um, about whatever it is, and I'll automatically be able to see the date that I last emailed him, which I find really useful just for my own sort of peace of mind, and I can reference it. Um, uh, and in the message here, I've got a link to the original message that I sent him, um, and I've also got the entire text of the message, so I can I can kind of talk about that in my reply to chase him. Uh, and it also means that I can, up here, I can search hash WF um, and I get a list of all my waiting for items, which is really useful when I'm doing a review, um, especially if I'm doing like a speedy review that doesn't go into all of my projects. Um, I can just have a look down here and see who I'm waiting to hear back from, um, which is quite a useful thing. So anyway, I can get rid of that now. Um, that's basically how I uh, use OmniFocus now.